Hey, what's up and welcome everyone to another Warzone Academy video. In today's episode, we're going to be talking about how to properly rotate to both stay safe and maximize kills. See, I'll never give you any techniques, strategies, tactics, whatever you want to call them, to help you stay safe and win in a corny way. I find to get the most value, I want to be safe, I want to be tactical, I want to be smart, but if I'm not fragging out at the same time, it's not worth your time. My goal is to have a new Warzone Academy video out every other day. Now, as many of you know, I'm active duty military and we're still keeping things going during this pandemic. Now, I say that because by the time I build the assets, get the information I need, voiceover, thumbnail, edit, everything, these videos are taking me upwards of 10 hours or more to make. And I say that because I want to thank you all for the insane support I've had on my first Warzone Academy videos. And it's really helping me to, you know, push through, keep these things going, get you guys the content you deserve in the midst of everything we have going on. So big thank you to you all. And without further ado, let's get into it. You're you're a nutcase. You're actually a nutcase. Let's fucking go. You're just simply better. Last video, we talked about how to consistently get high kill games by not only using the minimap's hidden audible range feature, but also maximizing your uavs to where you can stack one on top of another on top of another and keep growing your money your uav your information and your kills if you're interested in that video it'll be linked at the end now today we're going to be talking about rotation strategies these are the strategies that i use to rack up high kill games consistently but first i want to cover some of the strats you may be familiar with and why they don't necessarily work out in your favor now, first off, we have the noob rotation strategy, the new guy. It's what everyone starts whenever they first play a battle royale. All they want is to get the W. Well, maybe in this war zone, do a couple recon challenges, find out where the final circle is, hide somewhere in the center, and then just pray to get a third party to get the win. This strategy may net you some top tens, which admittedly is now a stat in the leaderboard, but it will not make you a better player. I mean, at this point, you aren't even playing the game. You're wasting your time, you're not sharpening any skills, and you're just buying precious time until an actual gamer comes to put you out of your misery. Now, don't get me wrong. It's exciting to make it to the end circle, and not everyone has incredible mechanical skill. I'm not expecting you to drop 20, 30 bombs. What I am expecting is you take part in the game, you enjoy the challenge of gunfights, you rotate strategically, and make your way in safely, but also have fun in the process. Now, the next strat is pretty much what the average person does. It's what I see all the time. They're just chasing the white line without any intentionality about how they're rotating. They're just focusing on getting to zone. And once again, this is a strategy that can work, but it's not as consistent as it could be. When we get onto the main strategy that I use, we'll see that something like this, something as simple as just running straight forward in the line, won't give you enough information about enemy players, it'll leave you open to way too many flanks, and frankly it can lead to a pretty boring game where you don't get that many kills. Now there is one final alternative strategy, and this is the full crackhead rotation strategy, and it will get you a lot of kills, but you're gonna die a lot. This is what you typically see in like the Twitch Rivals tournaments or any kill hunting tournaments, maybe wagers. It's full sending, popping as many UAVs as you possibly can, hunting everyone down in vehicles, and it's nice, but it requires extraordinary amounts of mechanical skill. It also requires an extraordinary amount of team coordination. And then most importantly, it requires an extraordinary amount of luck. One RPG, one C4, one camper in the wrong spot, and all this goes to hell. So while it's fun to watch, and yes, people can be racking up 50 plus kills as squads, it's not something that I find to be sustainable. And frankly, unfortunately, with the pretty inconsistent server performance of Warzone, I prefer to rely on outthinking someone, outsmarting them, using my strategies and tactics, rather than hoping I win a 50-50 gunfight. Because eventually, the 50-50 is not going to go in your favor. So if all of those strategies aren't it, what is? Well, I like to call it the pinwheel rotation. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain how you do the pinwheel, and then I'm going to talk about the benefits, because some of you may have been doing this unintentionally or maybe had picked it up from a previous game, but you don't fully understand how beneficial this strategy is. So we're going to talk about execution and then why it is so dang valuable. All right, so how do we do this? For starters, I never land inside the circle, or at least not significantly inside the circle. I always like to land outside of the circle and then work my way in. There are a few reasons for this. First, the zone naturally is going to push more players into you, and they're naturally going to push more players into the circle. 
So the more that I can limit my exposure from getting flanked, the better. So by landing on the outside of the circle, I know where the general flow of the enemies are going to be coming from. More importantly for the early game, I'm going to be running into a lot of people who are pushing because they're forced by the zone and I can catch them in open fields, etc. And with the now increased cost of loadout kits upwards of 10 grand, the more that I can get in early gunfights and get set up with my loadout and all of my perks, the more set up I am going to be for the mid game and late game to where I can absolutely steamroll. Now as we talked about in the previous video, the earlier I get my loadouts and the earlier I get my UAVs, this is just momentum. And the more momentum I can build early on, the better. When you're in the center of the circle, no one is forced to rotate into you. So for starters, pinwheel, start at the edge or on the outside. Okay, so we're set up on the outside. The first zone is starting to push in. What you're going to do is rotate along the edge of the storm, not pushing in a straight line, but covering along the outside of the edge, making rotations as you're also making your way to safety. Now, it's important you don't hug right against the zone. If you were to get into a gunfight, you don't want that zone immediately applying pressure to you. I'd say give yourself a good 15, 20 seconds from where the zone would actually be touching you. So this gives you enough space that you have time for a single gunfight, but it also prevents too many people from rotating in behind you. The further ahead of the storm you get, the more chance it is that someone's going to rotate behind you. So keep creeping on along the edge of that storm, 15 second 20 buffer, and your goal is to catch all the people that didn't plan ahead, that didn't have a rotation strategy, and now they're just hanging out right at the back of the storm. So now they don't have a choice. They've got the storm to their back, and you providing gunfire on them, they're going to be running through open fields. They're going to be running out of cover. And with how aggressive this storm is, unlike Fortnite, Apex, other games, they are forced to move, and you get easy, easy cleanup kills, you adjust back to that 15, 20 second buffer and then continue on with your rotation, racking up kills the entire way. Now that's the general gist, but there are some finer details of this execution that you need to understand in order to make this truly effective. So if it's squads, I'll have two people focusing on scanning out in front of me and I'll have two people focusing on making sure that we're not getting gate kept from the center of the storm. If it's solos, you're going to have to do all the scan yourself, but fortunately the scan area is pretty small and that's something we'll talk about in the advantages. Another key factor of execution is to make sure you stay flexible. For me, if I find that I'm rotating counterclockwise, but it's going to lead me into downtown, I will whip that around because I hate fighting in downtown. If you think it's going to lead you into an open field that's going to be an awkward rotation further on, flex, go the other direction. Same thing can be said if you need to pick up a UAV, a revive, more armor kits. If that zone stops and you're in that kind of limbo period between when the zone is closing in, feel free to run out, hit a shopping cart, change your rotation based off the needs of your team. If you do end up getting stuck in an awkward position, have a plan. I'm going to make a video in the future about the beginner mistakes players make. So many times I see people crossing roads, open fields, and then they do this whole like panic jitter back and forth. They don't know what their game plan is. Have a plan. If you're getting shot, know instantly what you're going to do. What's your nearest cover? What utilities? Smoke grenades? How are you going to mitigate the danger? If you don't have a plan, you're most likely going to die in the street. <laughs> And then, of course, another variable is if you are in a highly aggressive zone. So once that zone closes, if you see you have a large amount of space to cover, that's where you go from having a 15 to 20 second buffer to maybe a 20 to 30 second buffer. Make sure that zone is going to be so aggressive that you can't outrun it. That's a mistake a lot of beginner players make. So as soon as that zone closes, pull up your map and see how aggressive it's going to be. Okay. So we've got some of the finer details of execution down. A lot of it's going to vary and a lot of it's going to take some game sense and situational awareness to figure out long term, but overall advantages. Let's talk about it. The biggest advantage from the pinwheel rotation is this. It limits the amount of area that you have to scan. While it does seem like you're being more aggressive because you're moving more, it prevents you from getting shot. It seems totally backwards, but check it out. As you make this rotation along the edge of the zone, you are constantly clearing out in front of you and you're constantly moving. So you no longer need to worry about getting shot in the back because you're constantly rotating around. You also have an extremely powerful gas on the left side that's clearing out that entire area for you. So the only two places you need to worry about is out in front where you're trying to kill the people who are doing last minute rotations. And these are really easy cleanup kills. 
or you need to look off to the right, and that's where people may be possibly gatekeeping, playing super far inside the circle trying to kill people rotating in. But fortunately, with that buffer, you have the ability. Let's say you have a team that's really well established on a gatekeep, you can rotate back around in the other direction and still have time to work your way safely into the zone. If done correctly, you effectively take the area of risk from 360 degrees and narrow it down to 90, 135 degrees, because as you begin to clear forward, everything behind you into your right and to your back right has already been cleared off by you and your team. Another main advantage is you cover so much ground. If you are truly looking to become a better Warzone player, increase your gun skill, increase your understanding of the game, have high kill games, but still have, you know, a conservative and a consistent approach, this is the way. If you go in a straight line and go in camp, you're not going to get any better. If you do the average Joe, just kind of running along lackadaisically towards the next circle, not only are you exposed to a bunch of pinches, but you're just not going to get that many gunfights. Obviously, if you're a crackhead and you're chasing down everything you can with vehicles, that's awesome. But have fun getting blown up by RPGs or getting into one fight and then not knowing what's going on in the area and working yourself into a massive pinch. The pinwheel rotation covers a massive amount of area, but it doesn't put you out so aggressively that you're going to get third partied into the gulag and eventually the lobby. Now, there is one thing that's a disadvantage, and it could quickly turn into an advantage as you become a better player. This requires a lot of situational awareness. If you forget how close you are to the storm, you can put yourself in a very bad spot where now all of a sudden, you are the one with the storm to your back. It also means you need to be looking ahead. You need to see where the sweeping rotation is going to bring you. For me, if it brings me into downtown, I'm going to hate that fight. If it brings you into an open field, well, you've made a mistake. You need to be looking ahead. Now, fortunately, if you have that foresight, if you are able to, you know, understand your situation, have that large situation awareness, this becomes very, very easy. You say, okay, here's where we want to rotate to. These are the obstacles. Here's where we need to scan. And you can literally put it on autopilot. We see someone rotating out of storm, easy shots. Okay, we see someone gatekeeping, let's rotate and we'll fight them later. As you work your way towards the final zones, you're going to have to start thinking a little bit more ahead. Okay, maybe you break from the fact that you're hugging the edge and you want to make a straight shot towards this point of advantage, right? Let's say there's an open field you have to cross, let's go ahead and cross it now. Or if there's a high ground you want to take, let's fight for it now rather than having to work towards it in the final circle. But outside of that, it's really that easy. You got to have some flexibility. You got to have some situational awareness. You got to have a game plan for your future. But stick to the pinwheel rotation. I guarantee you you'll see a massive difference in your game, both getting more kills and easier kills at that and more trips to the top 10. Guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I got this suggestion from a previous Warzone Academy. It was one of the number one things requested in a previous video. That's how I make content. I make content based off of what you guys want. Let me know down in the comments what you want to see in a future video. And I, as always, I appreciate the insane support. I never put goals, but let's try to hit a thousand likes on this video. I've, I've never done a like goal before. Let's let's hit a thousand likes on this video. And um, yeah, appreciate you guys checking it out. And I'll see you on the next one. Peace.